So, what were my real thoughts on Princess Spike? Uh, first impression, not the best episode, but not for the reasons that you may think. It's not that it was a Spike episode, but rather it was an episode that didn't treat Spike very well. At the beginning of the episode, things were interesting. We had all four princesses present, and they all got important lines to say and important stuff to do. The main focus of the episode ended up being on the much underutilized Princess Cadence, allowing us to build on her character and make her a more interesting pony to get to know. But as soon as that art piece was unveiled and its importance was stressed, I knew something was going to damage it some way, somehow. Then we get into the plot that sets Pr Spike up as princess for the day, and that was Princess Twilight needing sleep and Spike having an important job of keeping Finn's quiet. And of course, as it happens in these situations, every little Finn starts making noise and being a bother. Now the problem is, is that the first two Finns that made noise that really bothered Twilight was the chainsaw and the jackhammer. The bird and the polo game were probably not as noisy as one would have been led to believe, but the two major noises in our situation was the jackhammer and the chainsaw, and both of those were performing vital jobs which contributed to the flooding of the hall later on. So, ignore Spite's greed and selfishness of wanting to get a massage, eat junk food, and have his portrait painted. That's not the issue. The lesson wasn't that Spite had to be responsible with his powers and allowed greed and power to go to his head. The lesson wasn't the many decisions that Spite made with a long line of ponies who all had individual problems and how they backfired, which would have been more interesting. The issue was the chainsaw and the jackhammer. The trees that Spike was allergic to, which I don't know why they were planted there in the first place, and the water main that was ready to break at any minute. If these issues had been taken care of the day before the summit instead of during the summit, or if the people doing those jobs had explained to Spite that they were important to get done as well, and then Spite had worked with them together to come up with a quieter solution to the job, such as using quieter tools or turning off the water or something else like that, then neglecting the job wouldn't have run into disasters. A major problem with this story is that after ignoring Twilight's princesshood all throughout Rarity Tate's Manhattan, it was suddenly in this episode way too important and vital and her opinion suddenly mattered too much. So much so to the point of ponies dismissing Spite's advice as being just from a random dragon and not having any weight whatsoever. Mm, kind of a racist attitude from ponies. But I guess the point was that uh, Spite wasn't a princess, therefore he didn't have authority and couldn't make judgment calls. And I guess if this was the real world, and if Spite was a little boy instead of a dog, people wouldn't be taking the little kids seriously either. At the end of the story, when things were resolved, the lesson that Spite learned was not to let power go to his head, and the ponies worked together to rebuild the statue, and they learned the importance of working together. However, this wasn't the lesson Spite should have been learning. 
what Spite should have learned was how to compromise when others have problems and both your issue and their issue conflict with each other and doing one or the other is still the wrong choice and you both need to find a third solution together. That's the lesson that should have been taught and that's the lesson that was ignored. They ignored compromise in favor of punishing Spite for being power hungry, which wasn't what happened. What happened was a situation put into motion by Spice's own ignorance and naivete of the situation and a whole series of events that had to go exactly wrong in that exact manner, in that exact order, to cause that exact problem. It was completely unforeseeable that a stray polar ball would fly such a long distance, go over the castle wall, hit a tree, that that tree would fall, that that tree would hit another tree, that that tree would fall, that that tree would hit a fir tree, that that fir tree would fall, that that fir tree would fall directly onto the pipe, and that the pipe would burst, and that the water would angle through the window and into the hallway. In any other normal situation, the bursting pipe would have flooded the streets, not the inside of the building. The trees would have fallen over in the other direction and the polar ball would have hit the wall and rolled down the hill someplace instead of going over the wall and knocking over the trees, which the trees themselves should have been rooted deep enough not to fall over from being hit by a polar ball. Not to mention the fact that the trees shouldn't have been planted there in the first place. There were tons of solutions available like transplanting the trees or using a hoof-held saw instead of a power saw. Or turning off the water before the pipe breaks rather than jackhammering around it and trying to mend it without turning the water off. Little common sense things that were overlooked. Not to mention the fact that once the jackhammer open the hole, the pipe is now exposed to where it can be worked on. You don't fix a pipe with a jackhammer, you fix a pipe with other tools, preferably quieter tools. You don't jackhammer a pipe to fix the hole, and the pipe was now above ground and accessible. It shouldn't... Uh, I'm just going on and on about this. So to close things off, I'm going to go over some points of interest. The gem statue was very obvious what would happen to that as soon as it was revealed. Although I was happy to see all four princesses and happy to see Cadence get a major role. I think Luno's turn should be next. Books probably made a better pillow for Twilight than Pancakes, am I right? Spite trying to talk to a bird. He is not Fluttershy, but surprisingly it works. I guess Fluttershy isn't the only one who tweets. All of the decisions that Spite made either for himself or for other ponies had no effect on the story whatsoever. The decisions that Spite made over the tree and the pipe were what did him in. Uh, that was completely unpredictable and blaming his actions in the later half of the episode for his actions in the first half of the episode was completely unfair. So what's with every noisy thing in all of Equestria happening simultaneously at the exact moment when Twilight needs to sleep? What's next? Is Final Stretch gonna start blowing wubs around? Surprisingly, I don't think Spike had to do anything. Twilight seemed to sleep through everything that happened regardless, so Spike's efforts were pretty much in vain. The New York City pony and the uh, pony that reminds me of Fargo were interesting characters. Of course, they had to have the stereotypical localized accents, but that's just to help you realize 
what American towns they're supposed to be from. I wonder how this will be translated overseas when people don't understand what a New York or Minnesotan accent really is. But it is nice to know that uh, Minneapolis or Minneapolis as it is now is another canon city in addition to Manhattan, Philadelphia and all those others. I don't know how they come up with all these crazy pony puns. And we got to see a Griffin delegate with a very fascinating design. It's nice to know that whatever Griffins are doing, they still have time to be delegates and play games and all those other things in addition to living in poverty and greed. I do get the feeling that uh, ponies were being a little racist towards Spike. Or maybe it was his age that was turning him off. That would be a little bit less racist if you took that interpretation. It was nice to see several ponies come back, including Fancy Pants and also giving a voice to Fluffy Clouds. It was nice to set him up ahead of time so we knew who he was when we saw him once again. And there were other familiar ponies in that crowd. I feel like after the 100th episode, we can really start getting background ponies a little more attention and help develop them more as supporting characters instead of background characters. I think Fancy Pants proves that episode 100 is taking background ponies in the right direction. A new headcanon was born today. I think that pony who lectured Spike about all of the gems that were in the sculpture uh, might be Twist's mom. I mean, same hairstyle, same voice, uh, same sort of glasses almost. It's very much an adult version of Twist, and I wouldn't be surprised if they were related. Although, calling ponies related strictly based on the color of their coat and mane and speaking habits and facial features could also lead to the mime and the one background pony that was playing ice hockey during the tank episode as being Scootaloo's parents. Spike did have an abuse of power issue, but it didn't go too far and didn't get too ridiculous. In fact, I think it introduced some interesting ideas and even brought back some old characters from previous seasons. And like I said, his abuse of power was not the cause of the water main breaking. Getting to see Caden's help, that was lots of fun. It was nice to see her step out and do more roles and be more active as a character. And it was nice to see her use her magic. Still want to know why plants that dragons are allergic to are kept in the middle of a city where they know dragons are going to visit. We got to see Matilda again right after the 100th episode, possibly with some kind of marital advice that she's looking for now that she's a newlywed. Fancy Pants was back, it was always good to see him and nice to expand his role again. And kind of interesting that two characters often shipped with rarity had a scene together. It's good to be the princess. And since Spike did cause a number of problems, some were situations that he couldn't possibly foresee going wrong, even though he had given good sound advice at the time, but he just couldn't know the outcome of that advice, and some of it was generally bad advice. But how would you have personally solved the trees, the water main, the two ponies wanting to share the same room at the same time? Those advices that were given in the show, which backfired on Spite, what would your personal judgment call have been in Spite's situation? Let me know in the comments section below. I'm definitely looking forward to the next episode. I saw a preview of it. 
uh, the same time that I saw the preview for Spite. Thank you for watching and good night.